Hey, Kevin, John Warrell with the AP. Hope your summer's doing going well. Um, I hate to start it off this way, but congrats on the Seth App App Appert hiring. Um, for some, it's believed to be a start, but how do you deal with the skepticism that has kind of followed this franchise since your hiring? Um, with some of the, from, from around the league, people have placed into question the franchise's reputation. Um, how do you go about addressing that now that you've had, you know, some time to get accustomed to the job? Yeah, I hope your summer's going well. Also, John, appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I mean, let me start by saying, uh, you know, your first part of the question about Seth. Really excited uh, that he's going to be our new head coach in Rochester. I believe uh, most of you probably just, just spoke to him. Uh, he's a quality person, high character, uh, great leader. Um, he has a track record for development. Uh, I believe that he's going to be someone that will be a great role model for our, our prospects as they learn, you know, on and off the ice. It's not just what happens on the ice. It's the young, young pros need to learn what it takes to, uh, to do the right things away from the rink. And obviously, you know, his background and what he's done. So I believe he's going to be a great fit. Um, you know, in terms of the second part of it, you know, John, I'm not, I'm not overly interested in what's gone on before what I'm what I'm focused on in this job is 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 doing the best I can every day surrounding myself with the best people um, and being myself you know and so I haven't as I've talked to other general managers around the league and people um, that hasn't come up to me we're going to focus on us we're going to we're going to work hard every day to be the best we can be to improve our team we know we have to get better um, and we're going to work towards doing that but uh, um, I'm just as excited as I was a couple months ago when you guys uh, saw my face and uh, through Zoom. Um, and just I'm looking forward to the challenge and the opportunity. Hey, Kevin, Mike here. Uh, hope it's all going well for you. Um, I have two questions related to the club. First of all, can you give us any insight uh, what the conversation was like with Jack? I'm assuming that took place and, you know, what was his reaction and how did that go? Jack and I spoke uh, the day everything happened. I think that's the date, June 16th, maybe. Um, and we had a brief conversation uh, with uh, Terry and Kim as well. Um, from there, exchanged some notes back and forth. Uh, I think he's uh, starting to get to know me um, just in what we're doing here. Uh, obviously, I've spent time, you know, talking to his agents as well. Um, and I just look forward to building that relationship. So, you know, I'll keep the conversations private, but uh, you know, I think from my standpoint, he is our franchise player, he's our captain. Um, and it's really important that he understands what we're trying to do here. He obviously has a great relationship with Ralph and now it's time for me to uh, build that as well. And the second thing I'd like to throw out to you is there was a report the other day and maybe they were spitballing, but when Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick say things, it's a little more than just some internet person spitballing about the fact that you might not give a qualifying offer to Brandon Montour. Um, is that even a possible option for at this point, given what he was and what the franchise gave up to get him? Uh, Mike, that's news to me. Um, not, I didn't, I didn't know that was a rumor, but, uh, no, that's definitely not something that that we've uh, we've talked about. Um, so um, we're we're you know as as I probably said this a couple months ago, the focus for me in the beginning here has been internal, getting to have conversations with our players, our staff. I've spent a lot of time with the coaching staff, discussing our players, our roster. Spent a lot of time personally myself watching our team. Um, but the reason the coaching piece was so important was to it's, – it's not fair of me to evaluate certain players or all our players if I don't know exactly what the coaches are looking for or the principles that we want to play by. So that's been a great uh, process to go through. And all our conversations um, regarding Brandon have been very positive from the coaching staff and, and you know, myself included. So, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the, where that came from. Hey, Kevin, uh, Brayton Wilson from WGR Sports Radio 550 in Buffalo. Hope you've been doing well this summer. Uh, you, obviously, this was your first go around with 
looking for a head coach for one of your hockey teams, this being the Rochester Americans, what was that process for you um, going in and, and going through? And what led you to the final decision to, to make Seth as the head coach of the Rochester Americans? Yeah, Braden, I'm glad you asked that question because it, it was a really enjoyable process for me, to be honest. Um, and and I, I really looked at this as we were in a unique time where we did have more time to go through this. Typically, the, the NHL and professional you know, sports in general, everything happens really fast. It moves fast. I felt that I had a bit of the luxury of time to really go through this process methodically. I interviewed a lot of people from all over the hockey world with hot different backgrounds, um, from you know the ju junior to college to Europe, um, American League, NHL. Talked to people, you name them. I talked to them, and I really enjoyed it for two reasons. One, I learned a lot. I took away something from every single one of those conversations, and two, I got to just know people and you know ask questions. So I really enjoyed it. I'm glad we were able to go through it. Um, just to give you a little more insight into the process, um, I, I narrowed it down. Ralph got involved as well, and he spoke to uh, different candidates, and we worked on it together um, and spoke together to people. So this was quite a process that we, we went through. Um, and Seth, to me, just kept kind of rising to the top in terms of his communication skills, his, his development background. I mean, he's He's had a chance at the program where he's take, taken 20 of the top players in the country at, at critical, you know, into their draft eligible years and working on a development plan for how you help those players get better. It just seemed to line up philosophically with where we were headed as an organization. And there was a natural um, synergy between myself, Ralph and Seth that we all felt. So I, I think that we, uh, we have a really good coach. Um, but there was a lot of other great people that I talked to as well that uh, were, we would have we would have landed with a great coach no matter how this all played out. But I'm certainly glad uh, we were able to get Seth. Hi, Kevin. Paul Hamilton, now WGRC TV2. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm confused. I have been. I'm glad we're getting this opportunity to talk to you. Um, you know, you talked about after Chris was let go about, you know, things changing with what you want in Rochester. Development's going to be first ahead of winning. Talking to Seth just a few moments ago, he really stressed winning. He said it has to go hand in hand. Guys, these players have to learn how to win. That has to go with their development. So he almost kind of put the winning first where you kind of put it, I thought, you can correct me if I'm wrong. When we talked before, it's like development has to come first and, you know, winning might happen after that. So I wanted to ask you, what exactly are you looking for in Rochester? Is it going to be a team that wins first? Is that important or is it development? And then if winning comes with it, so be it. Yeah, Paul, first of all, congrats on your new new job. So Thanks. All right, good for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, you'd have to go back and look at my, uh, my press conference to see how I, I framed the, the, the conversation around winning versus development. But I, I want to be really clear on this. I don't think it's one or the other. You know, I do believe that our goal in, in, as an organization is to win a Stanley Cup. And everything that happens within our organization needs to help us take a step towards that goal. So when I talk about development in Rochester, Paul, I'm talking about how do we personally invest in every single one of our prospects and players and put them on a track to succeed. Certainly knowing that not every single player that plays in Rochester is going to win a Stanley cup with the Buffalo Sabres someday, or be in a, even make the NHL. But if we do that and we're putting these players in a position to succeed, it will have success in Rochester as well and in Buffalo. So um, I think winning is really important in terms of philosophically as a professional athlete, every single time you step on the ice, you should, you should compete and you should, you should strive to win games. So um, I don't really look at it so one or the other, Paul. I look at it as it's part of the puzzle. But what I want to make sure I'm clear on is our, our goal in Rochester is to develop players into National Hockey League players. And um, in a perfect world, you do both.
Hey, Kevin, Heather Prusak here with the CBS station here in Buffalo. Good to see you. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us. Hope your summer's going well. Um, I want to kind of build off of what Paul was just talking about because Jason Bottrell's theory about building a team was building through Rochester and building at that level. What first question is, what is your philosophy on how to build a team? And then second question is, um, you know, how do you plan on getting this team some more secondary scoring to help out guys like Jack Eichel and get more than just that top line? Yeah, Heather, so just so I'm clear, are you, when you're talking about building, are you talking about building in Rochester or are you talking just, just, build, just building in general, just building an organization, getting the Sabres up to a standard where they can perform consistently and win on a consistent basis? Yeah, so, you know, I think certainly um, we have a lot of really good players here and there's been a lot of the, the, the Jason and the staff before did a great job in terms of building depth in the organization. Um, so what we want to be able to do when it comes to when you first look at Rochester is you want to give, give your prospects the ability to be challenged, to get meaningful reps and meaningful minutes to improve. Um, just from my personal experience, I really do believe when you're put in challenging situations, um, that's how, how you get better. You may not always actually be successful, but taking that face off with 30 seconds left and um, up a goal trying to protect the lead is something that you have to feel. It's, it's, uh, you have to go through that. So um, that's something that we want to look to build organizationally. And in terms of how you, as you take that from Rochester to Buffalo, you know, I may have touched on this before, but I, you know, it's really, really important to get your team and the NHL level slotted where players are in roles that one, they're comfortable and they can succeed in, um, but also that gives your team the ability to match up and, how you can match up with other teams' top lines or top deep pairs or how all those things flow is, is the roster construction that's needed to put the team together. So that's um, certainly something that we're looking at. We're looking very closely at that the players we have, how they fit together, um, what they do for us day in and day out. Um, and as you then take all in the information and in terms of data and analytics and you try to, you try to kind of condense it into what matters most, it's trying to put people in a position to succeed in terms of your Sabres lineup right through down into your Rochester lineup. And then ultimately team success will, uh, should follow if you're putting players in the right spots. Hi, Kevin, Alexa Ross with the CBS station in Rochester. Nice to see you again. Uh, my question for you is Rochester was on a really good path of success with Three back on the track to three back-to-back -back playoff stints. Taylor was named the North Division head coach for the AHL All-Star Game. So my question to you is, why the change? What made you move away from what Chris Taylor was doing and bring in Seth Afford? Yeah, it's a it's a fair question, Lex, and I and I I want to make sure I say this that I've known Chris Taylor a long time. I have a lot of respect for him. I I, I like Chris a lot. Um, we overlapped different times um, previously here. So this was not a Chris Taller um, decision so much as I, I was ready to um, put ourselves in a position where I felt well, we were getting a bit of a fresh start in Rochester. We were getting alignment to um, philosophically what we're looking to build here as the organization um, and how our, our overall staff works together from Rochester to Buffalo. So. Um, that's really the that's really the reason for change. Certainly, no. Uh, I think Chris and his staff did a did a great job. Um, but you know, these are in this position I'm in. You have to make tough decisions sometimes, and I and I felt like at this point um, where we were headed, it was the decision I needed to make. Hi, Kevin. Uh, Bill Hoppy. Uh, all that said about Rochester, I mean, do you expect the team to be significantly younger for for there to be a lot fewer veterans this season? I mean, do you, do you even do you have plans to sign veterans? Uh, I guess too. Yeah. So obviously, you know, looking at the way our our organization is right now, there's players that are under contract that are still here. That uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. That could be in Rochester or could be in Buffalo, depending on, you know, how things go during training camp. Um, I, I will say, though, Bill, I think 
having having played in the American Hockey League myself, um, you know, for a couple of years, I understand the value of of veteran leadership and how important that can be in terms of um, helping a, pro, a young pro learn. And I, you know, putting your arm around a guy um, that's 20 years old that's maybe always had success everywhere he's been. He's been the best player. And all of a sudden now you're in a league, you're looking around like, whoa, this is, this is pretty good hockey. You know, it's, it's tough. So I think there is a definite need for the right veterans to be in the lineup. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes um, in terms of, you know, the way things shake out and whether it's adding free agents or our own, you know, internal discussions. But uh, um, so, you know, I think it's a wait and see a little bit, but I certainly understand the value of having, um, quality veterans and leaders in, in your American Hockey League team. Hey, Kevin, Apple Bay here with Channel 7. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. How do you, as the new general manager of this team, balance building a team the right way with organizational depth and having young prospects while also still trying to satisfy a fan base that hasn't been to the playoffs in almost a decade and would probably do anything just to see a team even be able to compete to get into the playoffs next season, because I don't think you're necessarily dealing with a patient bunch. So it's a, it's a great question, Matt. And I think, you know, I, I'll say this, I, I think probably two months ago, I said this and I'll say it again. I think I'm in a unique position being from here and truly understanding our fan base and what this franchise means um and the ups and downs and what the what people are feeling right now i mean i'm part of this community i believe me it's uh there's <laughs> in the last two months um standing at my son's uh you know the baseball baseball game and watching i get a lot of people coming up and the passion that they have so there's a balance there of course you you need to um you need to win the day right like that's how i i, I try to focus every day on um First of all, win, win the moments, right? Like every moment that you're in, try to get better and better um, and then win the day and then go to the next day and do it again. And what I, that, that's a message that I have to the staff. So if we can start um, small and you just build and build and build and you have a plan and you have true purpose on what you're trying to do and you're intentional the way you go about things, um, that's, that's how we wanna move forward. So I understand in this position that there's urgency um, our fan base wants to see us succeed. So, so do I, and so do all of us. And um, we need to be better. We need to put a better team on the ice. And I understand that. And we're going to work. That's what we're doing right now. We're working every day to, to win those moments that will hopefully translate across the board to on-ice success. Kevin, you're up if you want to unmute. All right, Kevin, we'll come back to you. Great Sorry, I thought you, had un I thought you had unmuted me. My bad. Yeah, good to go. I'm not even a Zoom rookie, but um, it, Kevin, you talked about you need your prospects to play in quality time and pressure time. How much of that is, okay, you're going to play or you're going to earn that face off with 25 seconds left? That's an exact question that I asked everyone that I interviewed. I think it's the, it's a great question. So I don't think there's a perfect answer, but I, I, you need to earn it, right? You need to, you need to have that as a, nothing gets handed to you at, at, at any level of sports, nonetheless, professional sports. So there needs to be that, but at the same point, there need that, that's a feel for a coach, right? And there needs to be an understanding that, um, what role may a player play in the National Hockey League that we need to start preparing him for? And um, that's part of, part of the maturation of a professional hockey player is they're drafted sometimes as a certain type of player. And then you get into an American Hockey League and realize I may not be able to make it in the NHL doing this. So now I have to start to do this. And maybe um, the coach has to see that and then say, I need to get this guy the chance to take this face off. So, um, you know, it's a, it's exactly the right question to ask. It's a feel for a coach, but it's also understanding what the bigger picture and the, in, in the communication from the development staff and the Buffalo Sabres coaching staff to know what that player ultimately the goal is of how we think he can help us um, at the NHL level. So that all comes as uh, as part of the, 
the equation there. Hi, Kevin. Greg Bohr, Spectrum News in Buffalo. These playoffs specifically, we're seeing a lot of young guys kind of be unleashed. The Quinn Hughes, the Kale McCars. Would you like to see some of your younger players, Rasmus Dahlin specifically, maybe, you know, taking the chains off a little more going forward? Well, it's uh, you, you nailed it in terms of the just the pace of the games and the players up and down the ice and, you know, seeing that. And um, yeah, I think part of it is just – players find their way in different times. You know, I think uh, you'll, you'll see, you'll see some players um, have big jumps really early in the career and then flatten out and then they take another one and other ones, you know, flat line and then take off. So it's hard to say exactly, Greg, um, you know, you want to see this player do that. You want to see players getting better and you want to see players getting better daily. And then, you know, at the end of the year, they were better than they were the year before. And that's, by the way, that's not just young players. That's, that's the goal of every player. Um, or should be. And that's the goal that we have also um, myself and our staff and the coaching staff. It's to push each other and challenge each other. So we want to create a mindset um, within our organization that funnels right through to the players about getting better every day. And I think if you have that mindset, then what you just talked about kind of is a natural progression of how players will, will progress on the ice. Hey, Kevin, Adam Vanini with WGRZ. Uh, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I guess this question uh, falls kind of in line with Heather and Matt, so it's maybe a little bit of a different way of asking it. When we talked to you last, after you'd gotten the job, you obviously wanted to take some time and kind of evaluate what you had in terms of the roster, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, you want a Stanley Cup on the ice. Um, so you have that perspective. What does this organization need, in your opinion, and how quickly can you get it for it to translate to wins consistently on the ice? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, as I said, like, when I first, a couple months ago, talked about I need to get to know our staff, I need to get to know our players. What I've, what I've found is uh, we, have a, we have a really, really um, – great group of coaches that work very well together, uh, that communicate well together. Um, we've built a very good relationship over these couple months of through our interactions and all these Zoom calls and video, um, which I've also found talking to players, there's an incredible buy-in to what's going on from the coaching room um, to on the ice. And that that is a critical piece of, of winning at the National Hockey League level is the players believing in the message and willing to do what the coaches are asking. The next part I would say to your question is, you know, it's really important to um, put a team on the ice that can match up from one through four, one through six um, on the back end and in net. And so our team right now has a lot of really good players. What maybe hasn't been exactly right is how they all fit together. Okay. So I've, you know, I'm working on that. I'm thinking a lot about that. I'm talking to a lot of different people. I'm just trying to find out how we, we put that together. So I think um, not just uh, from, you know, what the lineup looks on paper, but then how they ultimately sync up together is what you see. And I think if you watch the playoffs, you see chemistry um, within lines, within D pairs, um, just that kind of natural flow that, that some of the top end teams build um, throughout their lineup. So that's, that's uh, I guess that's a long answer to your question, Adam, but uh, the best I can uh, give you just in terms of the big picture. I'm glad I'm the only one that doesn't unmute myself when I go to the talk sometimes. All right, we good now? Yeah. There you go. All right, thanks. Hope all is well, first of all. Uh, I got a couple things. One, just building off something you said. Um, you go to your son's baseball team or son's baseball game and see a lot of fans. What have they been saying? What's been the mood with, uh, with them? Uh, well, if the ones that are close friends and family, they're, they're saying you're going to do great. Maybe other ones are like, uh, you know, hey, you better do great. So, um, no, it's been, it's been honestly, John, an incredible um, – couple months in terms of 
feedback and what what's hit home to me on a daily basis whether i'm running into a fan somewhere and um or people i know is how fortunate i am to to be in this position and how i i take it so um uh just so much pride in the fact that uh what this town's about and that i have the opportunity to be in this chair so i'm i'm reminded daily how special that is and i think that's probably my biggest takeaway but uh yeah, I, as long as I get my mom and dad are still cheering me on, that's, that's a good thing, so. Very good, very good. And last time we talked, obviously there was a lot of things on your, that were ahead of you. Uh, how have you prioritized them? How have you been keeping busy these last two months? Yeah, <laughs> the days are still moving fast. Um, a lot of, like I said, so I, I kind of walk you through it again. You know, the beginning to me, it was critical internally to, to have the right discussions. That's with players, that's with our coaches, that's with, um, what we were as a team, um, watching a lot of video, certainly talking to our own internal staff um, from, you know, our, our scouting to, um, you know, how we're going to be looking to build um, on our player development side. Uh, obviously, filling Seth's role was a critical piece. Um, so there was a lot of, lot of time and conversations around that. Um, and then obviously the external. So, okay, reaching out to every general manager around the league, making sure that, uh, that I connected with them, um, talk to them about, you know, my philosophy and Ralph's philosophy and what we're looking to build here and, and how and why, and then, you know, circling back on those conversations. And um, that's been a part of it, speaking to a number of agents. Um, you know, the last time I think I talked to you guys, we didn't have a, any idea what the salary cap was going to be, the critical dates calendar, which is still um, not exactly – um, crystallized yet so we're still learning um, but we do have more information than we did a couple months ago so um, prioritizing in terms of you know what players on our roster are restricted free agents or unrestricted free agents and you know how do we want to have those conversations and then um, you know obviously a piece of this that I haven't even talked about till now is preparing for the 20 um, the amateur draft you know in uh, in, in October so um, we kind of started over that process. I want to give Jeremiah Crow and Jason Nightingale a huge amount of credit for putting the process in place and, and working off the calendar um, in a short time, getting, getting our process right and how we're going to go about um, from the top of the draft all the way through till our, you know, seventh round picks and, you know, how we're going to attack that. So um, I could keep going. There's been a lot, um, but uh, I'd say that's probably the, uh, the best, you know, way to kind of frame how I prioritized everything over the last, you know, two months. Kevin, speaking of that uh, critical dates calendar, uh, could you guys, because you've been off so long, could the league uh, give you a longer training camp, uh, like say a month long or something in November or whenever it would begin? And do you have any idea when it, when it could begin? Yeah, there's been there's been conversations with um, other other teams that I've had that were not in the playoffs on you know what it what could possibly look like. Um, don't have any idea at this point, but you know from certainly there's there's CBA and the NHLPA has to get involved. There's a lot of things, so not sure, um, but we'll see how it shakes out. Um, and you know we've we have been off since March, right? So it's it'd be nice to have the opportunity to do more if the league allows us to. Uh, Kevin, there are a couple quick things I wanted to go over with you, first of all. Um, how, what is the situation, like you talked about the cap, what is the situation with your overage? Are you going to potentially push that to 21-22, or are you just going to try to deal with that now and move on from it? Yeah, you know, the salary cap, it, it, obviously, like I said before, we were kind of in an unknown time. Um, we're, we're working through that now, Mike. We're, we're having conversations um, with – um, agents and our different and in our players that we need to sign. So not ready to give you an exact answer on that, but we've, I have had a lot of conversations obviously with Terry and Kim and how we're looking to build the roster. So I think you'll see um, kind of, I think you'll see this over the next few weeks begin to play out. And just two other quickies. Uh, are you planning on hiring any assistant GMs? Yeah, it's, um, I go back to John's, uh, you know, part of the fans asking, it seems to be the, one of the things that I get asked the most about. Um, 
And, and I, to be totally honest, I, I completely understand I am a new general manager. I have a lot to learn and I'm going to work to learn every day. Um, I'm a big believer in asking questions and surrounding myself with, with great people. And I know there's a theme of, you know, you really need to bring in someone that's been, done this job before and experience. And, and I understand that sentiment. I, I'm most interested right now, Mike, on, on, on people that fit into what we're doing here. I'm not as, as concerned about exactly what role or a title or filling a specific job. Obviously, an AHL coach is different. You have to fill your exact head coach. You need assistant coaches. But I'm talking more in the front office. I'm looking for the right people that fit into what we're trying to build here. So um, we'll see how that shakes out. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, I'm not going to do that or fill that role at this point. It's just right now I'm still working on on the people and how they all fit together. And just the last quickie is. Obviously, as you look at the cap and money and uh, where do Reinhardt and Darlene fit on the priority scale in terms of talking to them about their futures at this point, understanding the critical dates calendar is still very much up in the air. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, for me, it's uh, like our team is about um, everybody's important and I don't want to, I, I don't feel it's overly uh, um, a great idea ever to talk publicly about specific, you know, individuals and their contract status or what you're going through. Um, but you named, you named players that are very well known and are very good players in the National Hockey League. But um, we're, we're looking at our roster overall and we're working through each, you know, each individual situation, but not in a vacuum, how the one individual also fits into the, the bigger piece of all this. So um, we're going about it methodically, but uh, I'm not dodging the question. I'm just being honest that, you know, I believe in, I believe in, everybody has is a is a priority and that's the way we have to think every day uh kevin um two things S size of the coaching staff here i mean how many assistants would you expect seth to have and then in roster construction you'll have some free agents to bring in i would assume and you talk about how players have to earn their time and if you limit and it's been done many times over the 30 years or 35 years i've covered the american league if, a, if, a, if the NHL teams limits um, the number of veteran guys that a coach can turn to in those key moments, certainly it's easier to give the prospects that key time. So, I mean, how do you look at roster construction here? Yeah, Thanks. yep, no problem. Um, balance, right? It's, uh, I, I really believe, and it's something I've spent a lot of time with, with Ralph on, um, you know, you, you need balance within both of your lineups, meaning Rochester and Buffalo and how the, how the players fit and, you know, I think from a needs standpoint, if we need to call a player up in Buffalo that is a specific role, we need to try to have that role ready to go in Rochester. So it's not always just the leading scorer or your best power play defenseman gets called up if you need something else in your lineup in Buffalo. So it's trying to be mindful of that as you put your rosters together. Now, I already mentioned we have players under contract. There's already, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, players that have spent time in Rochester that are still here under contract with us that we're very excited about. But we'll look. We'll we'll fill um, where we believe we need to fill in um, on the depth. And you're and you're right. There's a there is a need for a veteran type of player that a coach can rely on, not just on the ice, but but in the locker room. And and I, I completely understand that. Thank you, everybody, for your time today. I appreciate uh, your questions and hope everybody has a great rest of your week. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And you see me around the baseball field. Come say hello. See you guys.